Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here. Thank you so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. Uh, by now you might have seen our delivery day video of our brand new Tesla Model Y rear-wheel drive, which I'm sitting in right now. This car is uh, literally a day old. It's like maybe 27 hours old now. Uh, so I thought today might be a good chance to uh, have a look at the battery using the Scan My Tesla app and also the OBD uh, Link MX Plus Bluetooth adapter, which is plugged into the CAN bus port of our Tesla Model Y, which is found uh, in between the two seats uh, accessed from the second row of the vehicle. All right, so here's the Scan My Tesla app uh, you can see right here. And uh, it tells you a lot of useful information. Um, when the car is running, it tells you in real time how much power is running through on this screen here. Uh, and then you can tell so also the temperature of the car as well. Currently it's 30.7 degrees. Uh, that's the cell temperature. The battery temperature is 35 degrees and the powertrain is 33 degrees. And then again, that's the torque of the, uh, the powertrain when it's in motion. And then this is the high voltage battery running at 358 volts currently. And uh, that's also the DC-DC converter, 12 volt system. Uh, yep, doing all sorts of things there. And then you've got the battery coolant temperature. Once again, more information there. Uh, we sort of saw that before, around 30 degrees for the cells. Now this is what I'm really interested in, and this is the capacity of the battery, uh, a 24 hour uh, day old vehicle after delivery. Uh, the car's a bit older than that, it was built in February, as you'll see as I go through the stats. But looking at the battery now, uh, a, a full pack is 61.3 kilowatt hours, which is actually more than the when new capacity. I'll just put my touch uh, device here so you can see. So up here, there's the full pack, 61.3 kilowatt hours, and then when you 60.5 kilowatt hours. So this is kind of typical for lithium ion uh, cells when, uh, when they're delivered brand new, they're actually higher capacity than what it settles down to eventually, which is the rated capacity. So I expect uh, as I do these videos in a week's time, in a month's time, that that full pack capacity will actually drop to below the when new capacity. And that's kind of what happens to lithium ion cells, they settle down. So that's, that's why when you take delivery of a brand new Tesla, you wonder why the range in kilometers drops after a few weeks, after a few cycles. That's kind of natural. It'll go back to the reusable or the rated range of the car. You see here that the, um, the full range of the vehicle is 435 kilometers. Again, keep that in mind, that will probably drop uh, as time goes on when we do more of these videos. And that's fine, that's, that's normal behavior. Uh, and then remaining is 49.3, which is the uh, current state of charge currently. I'll just have a look here. I'm on 80% state of charge at the moment, uh, 346 kilometers at 80%. Uh, and then when expected is 49.3 and usable is 46.6. So remaining and expected, sorry, remaining and uh, yeah, is uh, same as expected and then usable is 46.6. So. That's because of that extra buffer at the end there, 2.7 uh, kilowatt hours at the end there. Uh, range 346, like I said, that's exactly what the car shows right now at 80%, and then went 440, 435 kilometers. So that's a nice baseline for a 24 hour old car. Let's have a look at some of the signal lists. So this is what I like looking at. So you can uh, play with these. So you can see there the different categories, but if you just go to all, then uh, that's exactly it will give you all the information you need so uh, let's see so this app is really clever it actually decodes all the signals for you so that you as the user can just uh, have a look at it yourselves so 136 signals currently being decoded 139 so that's dynamic uh, we've got let's see we scroll down here uh, let's see what I can show you so yeah here we go birth year and month and date so right here 200, 2023 uh, when this car was built uh, second month of the year, so February, 12th day of the month, so February 12th, 2023, at 5.41 p.m. I wonder what time zone that is. Uh, given this car was built in Shanghai, so maybe that's sort of, you know, Chinese time, uh, probably not GMT, 5.41 a.m. maybe. And then you've got more information down here. So you've got state of charge, 79.5. The car says 80%, so it rounds up for you. And then the expected 79.5 as well. Um, then you've got regen 73.1%, so a day old car, uh, regen 73.1% of the time already, off to a good start. Got the battery current, battery discharge current there, 
And then more information as well. Uh, seven, 178 amp hours for CAC. Um, let's just uh, scroll up here to give you more information. So let's see, we've got cell temperatures. We've went through that before. Outside temperature 28.5 degrees. That's in my garage currently. Um, let's see, temperature of the headlamps. Also good. Let's keep going. So this is pretty cool too. So this is the steering speed. So have a look at this steering angle and steering speed. If I turn the wheel, you can see that moving dynamically there. It's always fun to see. So battery power 0 0.8, 0 0.9 kilowatts. I've got the AC running as I'm talking to you right now. So that's how much power it's using at the moment. And uh, this car is not actually, well, I've not actually DC charged this car at all because I just took delivery yesterday. But clearly someone in the factory or someone at the delivery center has DC charged 23 kilowatt hours and then the remaining 44.5 kilowatt hours has been AC charged. So I, I presume, uh, I don't know if there's, there's probably a DC charger in Chatswood where I took delivery in the back there. Whether it was DC charged back in Shanghai at the factory before it made the journey to Australia, I don't know. Uh, but there we go, 9 kilowatt hours has been regened. Uh, out of the 12 kilowatt hours, so that fits with that 73% I showed you earlier. So uh, we've got here as well the energy of this battery. By the way, this is a um, there, there, there it is. There, this is a LFP, so lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, CATL prismatic type battery, um, which is at the moment limited only to Shanghai deliveries, which is pretty cool. We're one of the few countries that actually gets LFP batteries, so. One of the reasons why I wanted to buy a real wheel drive was to see how the LFP performs day to day and to tell you what it's like from day zero or day one. So nominal full pack, 61 kilowatt hours. Uh, nominal remaining, which is the state of charge of 80%, so 49 kilowatt hours. Uh, ideal remaining, expected remaining is very similar at the moment, as you'd expect, it's a brand new car. 12 kilowatt hours, charge complete. Full pack when new, 60.5, so obviously it's a brand new car, as I explained earlier. The uh, the nominal full pack is actually higher than the full pack when remaining because the lithium ion cells will settle down over time. Interesting that it's also same behavior as the NCA NCM batteries that they do settle down below the full pack when new number as time goes on. Uh, let's see, we've gone through DC charge total, regen we've done. Uh, yeah, so let's keep going down here. Got uh, ride, front ride height, rear ride height. That's interesting. Um, haven't seen that before in the Model 3 that we had before. Got the left headlamp and le right headlamp position. Uh, radiator fan target. So much info here. Voltage of the pack, yep, 400 volts as you'd expect. Min is 216. Voltage DC, DC. And then all the way down here, you've got all the uh, different uh, voltages of the cells. So presumably this is a brand new car. That's all with the normal range you'd hope. They all look pretty much around that 3.3, 3.2 voltage or VC mark there. So yeah, so plenty of information there, ladies and gents, uh, for the uh, 2023 Tesla Model Y rear-wheel drive with the prismatic LFP battery, lithium-ion phosphate. And um, yeah, looking forward to showing more information as time goes on. Like I said, I'll do this again probably in a week's time to see whether that nominal pack has dropped. Do it again in another month's time, maybe in six months' time, just to give you an idea of where it's at. And see if there's been any degradation compared to the usable rates or usable range of the car over time as well. So I'll be um, probably AC charging this car to 100% once a week as per the recommendation of Tesla for LFP batteries. I try not to DC charge it too often because we've got an AC charger at home. Of course, except for road trips when uh, we want to get back on the road quickly. That's when we'll DC charge. And uh, yeah, we'll just maybe do a DC charge test as well with a supercharger to see how quickly LFP batteries charge. We know with NCA, NCM batteries, uh, after 80, 90%, it does tend to, tend to taper off in speed. Hence, people do recommend on the road trips just charge to 80%. But I'm interested to see what happens with LFP batteries, whether the speed actually is a linear progression all the way up to 100% or 
uh, at least less of a curve than the NCA and CM batteries. So I'll get my stopwatch out and we'll see what happens uh, at a supercharger test. So stay tuned for that upcoming video. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. This is Tesla Tom uh, with our 2023 Tesla Model Y rear-wheel drive, one day old baby. Uh, looking forward to showing you more content as time goes on. Until the next ludicrous feed video, happy charging.